if you want to be an excellent software developer, you need to master testing. But there's so much to learn and I know it's difficult to know what we should be learning. That's why in this video I will take you through a complete roadmap that I created for you. Here you will find everything you need to know to master software testing as a .NET developer in 2024. Early in my career, as soon as I realized the importance of software testing, I decided that learning software testing needed to be an important goal for me. However, as many other goals, it stayed on the bucket list for a long time, year after year. So if you can relate to that, this video is my small contribution to help you to achieve your goal of learning software testing in 2024. And by the way, you can find a link in the description where you can grab not only the roadmap, but also a list of resources that will help you during this journey. If you want to grab the source code for the diagram, you can do it as a Patreon. The first step of your journey is to learn the foundations. There's many things to learn here, but there are four that I consider extremely important. The first one is to learn the test pyramid. By doing so, you will learn the different types of tests. Then you should learn the concept of a unit of behavior. The misconceptions around the term unit testing causes a lot of problems in software testing. Many consider testing a waste of time because of this misconception. So learning the definition of a unit of behavior is extremely important. Take some time to learn naming, the different types of naming strategies, the importance of having good names in your tests, and also learn the AAA structure, actor range asserts. Most tests that you'll find out there follow this basic structure. Once you are aware of the foundations, take some time to learn about developer tests. And here the focus is to learn the bases and the tools that you will need to implement your tests. Start by learning a testing framework. Every single time that you see a start in the roadmap is my personal recommendation. Then take some time to learn an assertion library. It's something that will help you a lot. And optionally, it might be useful to learn a test data generator, like BOGOS that will generate fake data for your tests or learn about snapshot testing, what might be extremely useful if you need to test, as an example, legacy code. Once you are comfortable with those developer tools and you can start writing your first tests, it's a moment to start thinking about those tests that are a bit more complex to write. I'm talking about integration testing. Once you get into integration testing, I recommend you to take a look into test doubles, how to use stubs, dummies, or fakes, for example, in your tests. Once it's clear to you how to use test doubles effectively, it might be useful to learn a mocking framework, but be extremely careful to not overuse mocks. In the .NET space, I highly recommend you to take a look into the web application factory as well, so you can start testing your APIs, and to those types of tests where you don't want to use mocks or test doubles and you want to connect to the real thing, I highly recommend you to take a look on how to use containers in your tests. You can check something like test containers. And for external APIs, sometimes it might be useful to have something like wire mocks. So you have a, a mock server running a fake API. At this point, you have most of your testing needs covered. Then I recommend you to take a look into UI testing. So here I have a few suggestions for those that are doing web development, because on that case, you will need to automate your browser. And I recommend you to take a look into Cypress because it's the one that I have experience with. I still have Playwright in my bucket list, but I have heard amazing things about it. So take my recommendation with a grain of salt. If you are mostly doing backend development, feel free to skip this stage. Next, take some time to explore the idea of end-to-end -end tests. End-to-end -end tests are those tests that will make sure that you have wired up your system correctly. So when you deploy your system, everything talks with each other. If you call an API, you can call its dependencies. If you have an UI, the UI is calling the API. So everything is working as expected. At this stage, you will reuse the concepts that you learned before. So if for testing your application as a whole with an end-to-end -end test, you go through the UI, just take advantage of everything you have learned about browser automation. If you don't have an UI and you are going through the API, go back and practice everything that you have learned about the web application factory, test containers, and all those things. Then take some time to learn about test quality. There are two concepts that you want to explore to check the quality of your tests. The most known one is code coverage. I recommend you to check Coverlet mostly because it's free. However, first take a look into the licensing that you have and the tools that you have available 
as an example, at your company. For example, in my day-to-day, -day, I use .cover because I have access to it in my JetBrains products. So check the tools that you have access to. And besides coverage, make sure that you learn about mutation testing. If you combine your coverage score with your mutation score, you have two powerful metrics. In fact, it's a bit dangerous to only look into coverage. In the next step of your journey, once you know the basics of how to write a good test, once you start having experience with it, make sure you learn about test-driven development. It's a practice that can have profound impacts in you. So I honestly believe that you should learn it. While here in the roadmap, I'm not explicitly pointing to a given resource, a given step that you should learn about test-driven development, in the resources that you can find in the link below, I have a checklist of practices that will be useful to you to learn test-driven development. But with everything that you have learned in the previous stages of this roadmap, you have all the information needed to start practicing TDD once you know the basic cycle of test-driven development. Moving into the final steps of your journey, learn about performance testing. And here I'm including everything regarding load testing, soak testing, all those types of tests regarding the performance and the resilience of your application. And for that, I recommend you to take a look into K6. It's an amazing tool that will help you to build all of those things. If you don't want to be writing those tests with JavaScript, that is the case of K6, check something like NBomber. It might be extremely useful for you. Once you are familiar with performance tests, load tests, soak testing, all of those things, Optionally, it might be useful to learn about contract testing. This is a practice that might be extremely useful for you, especially if you have a distributed system where many teams are evolving APIs that depend on each other. So it can be a good way to enforce contracts between multiple entities. If you have come so far in your learning journey in this roadmap, now you can be confident that you master software testing. But remember that it's extremely important to practice, so I recommend you to go stage by stage and at each stage of the journey, try to apply the lessons learned to a project and take your time before moving to the next stage. So don't forget that you can grab the roadmap and you have a link in the description for that. And now it's the time to start working to achieve that goal. So make sure that you take a look into this playlist where I have a ton of videos about software testing just for you.